AWS Loft Talks. My name is Bruno Kurtik. I'm founding VP of product and strategy at a company called Sumo Logic. Sumo Logic is a machine data or log data analytics company. So it's kind of the big data in practice today. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about, not about how to write logs or what is the structure of a log. I want to talk to you about the things that we've learned about our customers, now five years running, um, how they use log data, what are the use cases, and why log data is essentially your application's best friend. What is a log message? And some of you here may be developers, others may not be, so I'm gonna just kind of give you the rundown what that is. A log line is a message written by a machine, infrastructure component, or an application um, that really tells you what happened, when did it happen, where did it happen, and maybe who did it, right? So it's an event. It might be somebody just processed a transaction, it might be somebody logged into a server, it might be an exception that came from your code in your application. Right? Why are they there? Why is log data so ubiquitous uh, and around us in our systems and infrastructure? The way I think about it is because it's log is really a message from a, from a developer to themselves in the future. Right? When they're woken up at three in the morning and somebody says, why isn't this working? Why is it broken? They go looking for that message they sent to themselves to figure out what broke, right? So they can go and fix it. And it evolves constantly because when they wake up at three in the morning and the log message doesn't tell them everything they need to know, the next morning they wake up, they improve it. So it's constantly morphing. So logs are everywhere and uh, they have many uses and I'll talk about that. And we also like to talk about application logs. So application logs, and when I say applications, I mean mission critical apps, websites, retail sites, SaaS products, services, whatever it is that you might run, say on AWS or another te technology stacks. But log data is everywhere. And all log data is app log data, even if it's not part of your app. Because if, if you're running your app and there's some network carrying bits between nodes of your application and that network goes down, the log line on why the network went down is a log line that tells you why your application is broken, right? So it's really everywhere. It's in, in your continuous delivery systems, it's in your operating system, it's in your applications platforms like databases and, and um, web servers and other things. And ultimately it's also in your application module. The stuff that you write in Java or Scala, whatever you choose to write your code in, it lives there as well, right? And it's all useful and it's all important because if you, if you don't have visibility into it across, you're, you're to some degree running blind. So logs are really hard. Um, there's a variety of reasons why they're hard. And one of the reasons is really because they look like that, right? And I had to cut this off. This went on for pages and pages, right? This is a single log line, right? It's some sort of an exception that some code threw up on our own um, uh, production system, right? Uh, and getting insight out of this and figuring out what it does, what it did and what happened is not easy, right? But when you, when you zoom out a bit, um, log data is hard for three really macro reasons. The first one, it's, it's really high volume, okay? So 300 gigabytes of data uh, for one of our customers, and we have customers for, for whom that's at 10% of their daily volume, is a billion records, right? So, there, it's, it's essentially machine data, right? And if you believe Moore's law, and machines can do um, twice as much every 18 to 24 months, they're also gonna tell you what they're doing twice as much every 18 to 24 months, and it's an exponential, exponential curve, right? So volume is big, and you gotta deal with the whole thing. Second, it's variability. Um, log data is also very diverse. There are no schemas. When a developer wakes up in the morning and wants to fix their log line, they just change a printf statement, and the next day, there's a new log line that appears, right, with a different schema. And there's heterogeneity in infrastructure, so all of the upgrades to your infrastructure, to your app components are constantly adding new log lines or changing old ones, and it's, it's totally variable. There is no schema you can depend on, right? So that makes it hard. And the third reason is its velocity. Log lines are most useful when you understand what they're telling you as soon as you can catch them because it's an event of something occurring. It doesn't really matter if you catch something occurring 30 days later, right? You wanna know now, like something broke, you're having an issue, 
you need to understand it quickly and now and react to it and handling it at that velocity is difficult as well. Okay, so don't get depressed. They're also very useful and it's really worth the trouble. And what I'm gonna talk through the rest of this talk is about the use cases and the value you can get out of good logging practices and good logging analysis that, you, that is available to you today. You can really use it for a variety of things. This is a subset of stuff, right? So performance and, and KPI measurement, right? Your app, your infrastructure, your systems are generating all kinds of KPIs that are important for you to understand as you run your business or your app. Uh, you can use it to operate the app. You can troubleshoot. You can look for root causes of failures, all kinds of stuff. Um, you use it for security and compliance, right? Are you gonna, you're building a retail app? Are you taking credit cards? Do you need to tell the auditors how you're handling that data? Um, is your security team gonna let you put it on Amazon outside of their control? All these things, logs will help you um, justify and defend. And finally, you know, it's really agile BI. Logs have so much information that can help you run your business and mine for intelligence about your customers, about your, about your application and other things that it's, it can be really invaluable, right? So what I've found across our customer base, you know, typically when we talk to somebody who's a pretty high-end tech shop, they use it for only one or two of these things, right? And there's a lot of value to be gained if you look at this holistically. Let's talk about operations, right? And what, what can you do when you need to operate your own app to help you run it? Like if you're running a SaaS service or, or something that's customer facing online, what can you do with it? You can measure performance, troubleshoot, but actually let me go back and, and talk about it in concrete terms, right? Ultimately, if you do this right, it can help you even predict the future. Right? You can actually project and, and know what is about to happen and get proactive uh, and, not, and get, out, get yourself out of the reactive mode. So this is actually one of SumoLogic's own uh, dashboards. It's purely powered by logs that we generate on our own platform. And this is one of the many that our operations team uses to monitor our own production application, right? We run several thousand EC2 instances. We use a variety of, of technologies under, uh, on the AWS stack. We have many, many modules that we run. And a few things that this tells me, that we can tell you here. So for example, this is telling us how are we doing in, ter in terms of generating errors and exceptions based on our own internal application modules that are all written in Scala and Java and whether there may be an issue somewhere in our production system based on what we see here. Over there, we're doing analysis of our um, statistical analysis of our latency. So what matters to us is how fast are we running searches on behalf of our customers? And this gives us a very detailed view on how we're doing in, de in de delivering on our SLAs to our customers on a very, very granular level. Right? Down here, we're measuring access and transaction counts that our customers execute. We have several hundred customers on a single multi-tenant engine, right? And so it really matters because when something breaks at Sumo, we break every one of our customers, right? Not just one, we break every one of them, right? So it's very important for us to know what's going on and who we're doing. And down here, we're monitoring load by each individual cluster. And this particular picture here shows you that somewhere at 1.45 p.m., up until then, we, we were having some issue with one of our clusters because the load was higher than, than anticipated, right? So it's helping us gain visibility into what's going on with our production system. So because this is an AWS pop-up loft, I want to talk to you about what is AWS enabling you to do with their own logs, the logs that are powering stuff that your app is running on. So AWS is really ahead of, the, ahead of its time in terms of delivering this information when you compare it to any other platform out there, right? So when you look at what you can gain there is you can really measure how well is the AWS infrastructure performing. You can understand how is your deployment being touched by APIs and people who are managing, right? You can understand and, and measure experience that your users are getting if you're using the CDN stack or something else, right? So I'll walk through some of the typical logs that are generated by AWS platform and talk a little bit about how useful they can be when you're managing your own application running on AWS. One of the most popular data feeds from AWS was launched about a year and a half ago. It's called CloudTrail. So this really is an audit from AWS that tells you exactly what the AWS APIs are doing to your own infrastructure, right? So here we're showing 
access and activity or actions taken by your own administrators or developers on top of your AWS account uh, in this particular time period, right? I think that time period is the last 60 minutes, right? So people are running instances, they're changing accounts, they're terminating instances, they're creating networks, they're doing all kinds of things, right? Has anybody here called, heard of a company called Codespaces? Okay, Codespaces is a, is a company in Europe that was hacked last year. Somebody got into their AWS console, owned them, um, tried to extort money. When they didn't pay, they started deleting their data, deleting their instances, and they could not recover. They shut the business down, right? That's how bad it was. And all of that activity is in CloudTrail, right? And it's available to you and it's free from AWS, right? So looking at that data is critically important. Right? There are other things you can do with it. You can look at it across regions. You can look at it what resources are created and deleted over time. But it's, it's there, it's available, and, and it gives you a tremendous amount of visibility into what's going on. Further on with AWS. So S3, you know, the biggest sand in the world, right? So I don't know how many trillions of, of, of objects it stores today, but we use S3 quite a bit. S3 to us is our backend store. We store double digit petabytes of data after compression in S3, like monstrous amounts of data. And this is all on behalf of our customers. We make billions of calls into S3 to get that data. And with S3, you pay for touching that data. You pay for when we pay for putting it on, pay for analyzing it, all this stuff, right? What did we learn th through our visibility to logs from S3 is how to optimize our own code to be more efficient without sacrificing performance and basically manage our cost by analyzing this immense data set, right? So this is all available again. You know, if you use S3, you can turn this audit on. It drops into another S3 bucket and you can analyze it, right? Other things you can do, you can measure latencies, you can understand how much you're putting into each bucket. It's, it's immensely uh, important and gives you great visibility into how your app is inter interfacing with AWS infrastructure. Going beyond that, CloudFront. So CloudFront is AWS CDN. If you run an app on Amazon, you need to get it fast in front of your users around the world. You can use CloudFront to accelerate your app. But what, mean, what it means then, once you do that, is that you're giving control and visibility into to AWS on what's happening between the user and the edge, and you no longer see that because it's not touching your app. It's being cached on Amazon's edge, right? Well, CloudFront generates logs. And all you need to do is configure, drop it in S3, and load it in a tool like this one or another one, and get all this visibility about exactly what's happening. So again, next layer of visibility. No matter where your workload runs, this one is yours, but you don't run it, you can get visibility into it. And ELD, again, gives you detailed feed of data on how it's performing on behalf of your app. And then you can start measuring things like, you know, what's the highest latency by path being requested on your web app or other app? You know, which are the highest latency clients? Where are they coming from? Are they coming from specific countries? You know, you can look at it based by, by app. If you have multiple apps, you can tell which apps are not reacting well to requests, which ones are. Right, so it gives you visibility into that can actually help you optimize your business and optimize how your app serves your customers. Right? And then last but not least, this is really exciting. This was announced by AWS last Friday. It's called VPC Flow. So if you run a virtual private cloud in Amazon and your security team or you care about to understand how how is traffic going from instance to instance or from instance to the internet or from the internet to ins into your instance, you now can get a detailed view and detailed feed of audit logs that tell you where is this traffic coming from, what that traffic looks like, like where, where in the world is your tra traffic being initiated. It can tell you how much traffic are you seeing and is, are you expecting this much traffic, right? You can actually figure out whether what the, what the network traffic is telling you, whether that's something you expect or not, right? And you, know, you can start predicting, predicting things, right? Number of packets, where's the, the, where's the number of packets of traffic gonna go? Do I need to spin up new nodes? Do I need to auto scale? Do I not, right? So it allows you to, to figure out whether your app is doing well based on traffic it's seeing and what type of traffic it's seeing, right? So these are all the things that AWS allows you to do today with the data 
that you get essentially for free um, from all of the infrastructure that they run on your behalf. Now, what about your own app and your own logs? So we learned at Sumo, every department in the company uses logs to run our business. So our, our operations team, obviously, as I said earlier, our product managers use Sumo to figure out how are users using our features, do we need to fix things, are features hard to find, what have you. Um, so application usage. We also use it for our sales analysis, right? So our app generates a bunch of logs that can tell us about our customer activity, right? And so here's one of the one of those example apps. This is measuring hits over time. That's measuring requested resources, right? This in this particular app, people were trying to use specific resources that the app provides, and you can measure what are the resources that are being most used, what are the resources that are being downloaded over time, right? So a lot of business information in there in terms of revenue, customer behavior, application analytics, good features, bad features, all kinds of stuff, right? All of this is tremendously big data. Like there are terabytes and terabytes each day that you have to weed through to get to this, right? So we make these logs look good, but they look like that one that I showed earlier. So, you know, in summary, in our opinion, logs are your application's best friend. All logs that in any way, shape, or form support your app, any infrastructure, is part of your app. They're, they're really important and with the right tool, they're omnipotent. And ultimately, if you do it right, it will help you run your business better. AWS Loft Talks.